Hey everyone, Ali Torben here. I am so sorry that I couldn't be in person with you. Both my kids have COVID, so we are making lemonade with lemons. And now I have a collection of 100 pens here for my personal desk use. <laughs> but we are going to do a fun inspiration audit for you today. It's going to be an abbreviated version of the workshop I was going to give. And I hope that you are enjoying your day of inspiration. And so let's get started. Okay, we are going to do a abbreviated inspiration audit. And what I would like the goal of our time together is to just audit your current inspiration, add more sources to your list. And I also want to give you a technique for analyzing your inspiration so that you can use it today and in your work going forward. And overall, just inspire to get more inspired. Who am I? I am Ali Torben. I'm an information design consultant here in the DC area. And I'm also the senior data literacy advocate at Data Literacy. And I started my career as a data analyst, like running SQL queries all day. And I kind of felt like something was missing. And so I ventured into data visualization and then infographics and kind of data art even. So here I have traditional data viz, infographics, data comics. And I also speak about my data visualization work and creativity and interview amazing designers on the Data Viz Today podcast. And I am also in the last steps of creating a book called Chart Spark: Harness Your Creativity in Data Communication to Stand Out and Innovate. So some of the things you see today are in the book. And in general, we want to be inspired so we can be more creative in our work, right? And I like to define creativity is just the ability to generate new ideas or remix existing ideas that are useful. And the underlying thing here is that creativity is an act. It's not some amorphous, you know, thing that maybe you have, maybe you don't, maybe it'll be a strike of lightning, maybe it won't. It's an act. It's something you can be active in. Creativity is not an identity. It's an act. And in this act, I like to think about it as a flow, different acts you're going to do that repeat and have this very harmonious flow. So first, you're going to ideate, be positive and open to ideas, gather inspiration. Then you're going to rest. And this can be, this can include actually resting and also getting feedback, collaborating with others, bouncing ideas off of people. And then on the other end, execute. At some point, you have to push your idea forward a little bit to see if it's going to work. And then you can loop back and you can rest, get feedback, ideate some more. So it's a very harmonious flow, all active things you're doing in each one. And the thing is, inspiration is present in every single one of these steps. And this great quote by Todd Henry, immature creative pros wait for inspiration mature creative pros chase it down. So let's chase our inspiration a little bit. Let's do an inspiration inventory. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. If you do have a piece of paper and pen, uh, you can write it down or you can just think about it or maybe write it in your phone, but write a list of where you typically look for inspiration. I'll wait a few seconds. Okay, I'll share my list. I would I wanted us all to share, but you know, we're doing our best here. So these are ones that where I typically get my inspiration. Blogs, looking at the IIB awards, newspaper, Pinterest, books and magazines, Behance, Dribble, Instagram, nature, films, music, museum, library, the pudding, architecture, and video games. And we'll come back to that list, but I want to note that there are actually a couple different type, a few, three inspiration types. 
First one is practical. So for my perspective, these are things in our field, like a uh, graphic particularly solves a problem in a particular way that you like, or, um, you know, a data visualization, infographic, and I'm even going to go and say graphic design in our field. So these are things that you're like, oh, I like this technique. Maybe I could use it in my work. Then we have internal inspiration. And this comes when you're resting or doing a different task. And you finally have that space to make those connections in your brain. Walking, nap, shower, meditate, being out in nature. That's actually a type of inspiration too. And last, what I like to call energy inspiration. This comes from external sources, not in our field, that give you that spark of an idea or like a bolt of energy, like seeing someone so amazing at their craft that gives you just energy to come back to your work. So things like architecture, museums, games, movies. And as you can see, there's actually probably a good amount of overlap between these three. <clears throat> but I want you to think about how Sometimes we don't focus on one more than another. I'm going to venture to guess you probably have a lot of the practical inspiration, and maybe that's the first thing you even thought of. And I, right now, I would actually like you to mark up your list, circle the things that are more practical inspiration, things from our field, and then put a star next to the internal inspiration, the things where you are actually just resting maybe doing a different task, giving your brain space to make connections. And then underline things that are external sources, so not in our field, that give you a spark of energy. And again, you can have overlap here. That makes sense. But go ahead and mark up your list for a few seconds. Okay, so I marked up my list <clears throat> and you can see I did have a lot of things that were practical inspiration at first. You know, when I someone says, hey, where are you to get your inspiration? You're like, oh, blog, IAB awards, newspaper, Pinterest, Behance, Dribble. And then, you know, as you st run out of those, you start thinking, oh, well, where else do I get inspiration? So a lot of things where I'm actually resting, uh, watching watching a movie, going out in nature, and then other things that... Um, you know, give me a spark of energy elsewhere, like architecture. I don't play video games for resting, but you might. So these are things that are personal to me. And what I'd like you to do now is count. How many of each did you have? Count up your circles, count up your stars, and count up the ones you underlined. And I hope that you're finding that the numbers are pretty close together. If they're not, maybe this is a good time for you to think about, oh, I only look in my field for inspiration or the way I see inspiration is completely stuff outside of my field. Maybe I can bring things inside my field uh, to inspire me a little bit more. I mean, that's why you're here today, right? So I hope these numbers are pretty close together and I want you to take special attention to the one that's the lowest. So for me, internal is the lowest here. So think about which one's your highest, which one's your lowest. And in my experience, for me personally, and then also talking to a lot of other people about this, the internal inspiration is usually the lowest because we don't often think about our internal inspiration as a type of inspiration, you know? Like resting is like the last thing we do, right? Like we, I should be ideating. I should be executing. I need to go get inspired. But thinking about go getting inspired as um, resting too, that can actually open up a whole new uh, category of inspiration for you. Resting is inspirational too. I hope you remember that and make more time to rest. And... I want you to think about right now, what can you do to rest more? So it's not something we think about that often. And I know that 
we can't just take a week off whenever you, you need inspiration. I live in the real world. I have work too. <laughs> I can't be like, I need to get inspired. I'm taking a week. So what I like to do instead is to create what I call a recess list. <clears throat> so think about what you could do to rest in a minute, an hour, a day. So for me, if I only have a minute, like I do need to just, you know, give my brain a break for a second, go make a cup of coffee, stretch, go get the mail. Just an easy way to refresh. An hour, I might go take a walk, go to lunch, read a book. If I have a day, and this is an interesting time interval that we don't always think about, um, I might go to the library, bake some treats, go to a museum. So take a second and think about what you would do in each of these. And what I'd like you to do is when you get home, actually write out this list on a piece of paper and keep it next to your desk. I've got mine. Here's mine. Got these things. So when I do need to take a break, I don't have that decision fatigue. Like, oh, what am I going to do for a break? How much time do I have? Like, okay, I only have a minute. What can I do? Coffee, mail, stretch. Okay, which one am I going to do? So if you have it right next to your desk, you're more likely to take that break because you don't have to decide what you're going to do. It's already there. Remember that internal inspiration resting is a type of inspiration. So don't forget to rest. Okay, last thing, I want to focus again on practical inspiration. Collecting practical inspiration, it's just not enough. Often we admire it and we forget about it. So what I like to do is analyze it. And I do that with the x-ray prompt. So first I think about, okay, what got me excited about this graphic initially? Just when I first looked at it, no right or wrong answer. What specifically got me excited about this graphic? Then rules. How are they following Dataviz best practices? Anarchy. How did they throw out the rules? And then you. This one's the most effective one, I think. How might you use this in your work? So it's taking it a step further. What are some of the conditions in which this particular things that they did would be useful for you to use? And Gabrielle Marit uh, kindly let me uh, show this graphic to you, and we're going to x-ray it live just to show you how this works. So this is, says online menu, percentage of online dating users who say that these profile information are very important. So we have profile picture, type of relationship, children, hobbies. So first, what got me excited about this? Well, the 3D bars for one, <laughs> the floating phone in the front, and then these harmonious colors in the background it really sets this nice mood. Oh, and also really like the 3D um, icons in the center. How is it following data as best practices? Well, you've got this really nice typical bar chart, and then you also have uh, the axis lines are labeled, the grid lines, and then it goes 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So all following nice data biz roles. Anarchy, how did this throw it out the window? <laughs> well, we've got the 3D transparent bars. Um, she has this really cool depth that you don't hardly ever see. So we've got the phone in the front and then you actually see some sand and then the bar chart. And then there's even more sand in the back and then the sky, like that's so many layers in the bar chart. And then you, how could you use this in your work? Well. All these little things that she's using, like the depth and the colors and the 3D and transparency, if you want to set a mood or grab attention in the future, these kinds of things are the techniques that you can grab and use in your work. So you can see actually breaking it down and analyzing it like this, it makes it more memorable and it makes it more likely that you are going to be able to grab something specific in the future and use in your work. So next time you have a graphic presented to you or you scroll by it, don't just look at it. Don't just bookmark it. Don't just add it to a Pinterest board. X-ray it. Excited rules anarchy you. And what I do is I compile a spreadsheet of all my X-rays so I can actually search through it when I'm ideating or executing. So later today, uh, I'm sure after this, this uh, workshop, you are going to see more amazing graphics. So take time to x-ray it and you can start filling up your notebook with all these analyses. All right, quick summary. Inspiration is used in every part of our creativity flow. And make sure you're getting a balanced inspiration diet. 
practical internal energy. And for more internal inspiration, make a recess list. So how can you rest in one minute, one hour, and one day? And for practical inspiration, analyze these great graphics. X-ray them, excited, rules, anarchy, and you. And then that's more likely that you can build this amazing toolbox that you can use in your work. So I hope that has inspired you to get more inspired. Thank you for letting me come virtually to you. And if you have any questions, you can email me hello at AllieTorben.com and you can go to AllieTorben.com slash ChartSpark if you are interested in hearing more about the book when it comes out in December. Okay, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and at the awards tomorrow. Bye, everybody.